Hello and welcome to Girls Coded Academy's first video of the Scratch series. Today we'll be animating our name as an introduction to Scratch. So first, you need to go to scratch.mit.edu. And if you have an account, you can sign in. If not, you need to make one. So if you don't have one, join Scratch. It's super easy. You just got to fill out your username, password, and your name and an email address as the steps go on. If you already have an account, go ahead and sign in. And once you sign in, you're going to brought to this page, which is the home page. And there are many options you can do on this page. What we're going to do is we're going to go to create. We're going to create our first program, which will be animating our name. So go ahead and press create. Okay. So I know this is super overwhelming at first. There's a lot of different blocks. You don't know what it means, but I'll walk you through it. So over here, we have Scratchy the cat, and it's called a sprite, which is the, a character or the main character of your program. And we can control our sprite with these blocks. So you can have him move different ways, rotate, go to random positions, glide to random positions, which means that he'll grow across the page instead of just appearing there, point in different directions, you know, a bunch of different blocks to control his movement. You can also have him change his looks. So we can have him say hello. I'll pull him down so you can see him say hello. Change his costume to different ones that he has. You could see them under the costume section. Uh, you can just have him change costumes. You can have him change his size, get bigger, uh, change his color. Over here, we can have him say noises. So we can have him play sound meow. <coughs> We're going to also add different sounds from the library, or you can upload them yourself or record them. Um, you also have these events, which control when the blocks happen. So we can have it when the green flag is clicked, which means when the program begins. So the green flag starts the program, and the red stop sign stops it. And so there's different kinds of ways to start the blocks. You can have it controlled by different keys, uh, controlled by when the sprite is clicked, um, by sending different messages across, um, and we'll get to that as well, but today we'll just be sticking with when the program begins. Um, then the control has to do with when the actions happen as well. They control how many times they happen, when they occur, you have it, you can have them wait until they start, and how you control your sprite is you stack these different blocks different ways, you know, we can have them go a bunch of things like this, we can have them turn, so, you know, have them say something. I'm just stacking random blocks to show you. So these all can happen, and we want them to happen when the green flag is clicked. So we just stack a bunch of them together. We'll have them play a sound after two. So see how we just like put them together in however order, just so you could see that when we press the green flag, he'll move. I say hello. The reason why these didn't show is because it they happen, they cancel each other out almost. So if we throw in a little weight block in between them. Press the green flag. Let's that he said hello. And now he'll meow. So that's just how you stack the blocks. And these are how you control your sprite. So there are other sprites as well we'll get to later. Mostly sensing operators, variables. And we'll get to that in further um, videos. But today we're going to stick to the main four. Is it four? Main five. <laughs> um, okay, so first we're going to remove Scratchy the cat because we're gonna add our name instead. So you just go over here to this bottom part, and click the X. And now we're with a blank, we're blank program. So what we wanna do is we wanna add another sprite. So go over to choose a sprite and you just click on it and you'll have a whole library of sprites. There are many different options you can use. Um, all different types of animals, food, you know, objects, but I wanna go over to letters today. And there are many different kinds of letters you can choose from. But I'm going to drag out a J for Juliet. So I'm going to bring up block J. And you just pick whatever letter is first in your name. Bring up the J. And I want to pick a background. So go over to the background section. And I'm going to click on this little photo. You can add whatever one you want. You can also draw your own. But I'm just going to pick um, the circles. You can also pick a random one. You could upload one from your computer, create one. Um, okay, so let's try to animate this J. 
And right now we're gonna focus on the movement blocks, the motion ones, the blue ones. So go over to the blue ones. And I wanna have him spin. So you just can drag out whichever direction you want. I'm gonna have him spin to the right. So I'll pull out the right block. You can be how many degrees, you can change it to five degrees at a time, whatever you'd like, but I think 15 is good for now. And I wanna have this happen when the program begins, when the green flag is pressed. So pull out when the green flag is clicked. And we'll see when I press it now, the J rotates 15 degrees. We want this to happen throughout the whole duration of the program. So this is what a forever block is for. A forever block will repeat whatever is inside of it throughout the whole duration of the program. So I'm gonna put this around the turn 15 degrees. Now when I click the green flag, it'll turn 15 degrees and for the whole duration of the program, for the entire time, so until we stop it. So let's see what happens. So I'm gonna click the green flag and see now he spins and spins and spins and this can theoretically go on forever until we stop it. So let's stop it. So now we animated J and that's great. I'm so happy we did that. And now I have to add, the <laughs> I don't know why that sounded so awkward. Um, so that's great. We animated our first letter. We animated our very first sprite. Um, okay, so now we're gonna add more letters for our name. So let's go ahead and we're gonna go back to the choose a sprite. We'll go over to letters and I'm gonna pick a different style. So I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna pick out the U, wherever it is, do, 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 U. And U is the second letter of my name. And let's stay with the movement blocks and just see what we can do with it. And I like the glide to random motion or like random position. So I'm gonna go over here, drag out the glide to random position and I'm gonna have it occur when the green flag is clicked. Now when I press the green flag, it'll go to a random position. And again, I want this to happen throughout the whole duration of the program. So I'm gonna go back to control, drag out a forever block and put it around it. Let's see what happens when we press the green flag now. Go ahead and press it. And so we see how he's just bouncing all over the page. And this will go on forever. And the J block, of course, is spinning. You can see how it's highlighted in yellow because it shows that's what's happening. It's that round of blocks that are happening right now. Okay. So we animated two of our letters. Now we're gonna go back in and add our third letter. And we're gonna still explore the movement blocks today. So go back over, choose a sprite, go over to letters, and I'm gonna pick uh, the story L. And you see how there's, go over to costumes, the different, different costumes, I want it to be blue. And you can also change the color, so we can have it, you can fill it, um, and let's fill it to purple. So you just click on the little um, bucket of paint spilling, and I'm gonna, you can pick whatever color you want. Let's have it be red, and you can make it more saturated, change the brightness of it, and I wanna just go right over it and click. So now we have a bright red L. Now we can go back over to the code for L, and I'm gonna drag out again a when green flag is clicked. Um, I want him to move up and move down. So how it works in Scratch is that there's a Y coordinate, which controls the up and the down location, and the X coordinate, which is the left and the right. So how we can move L up and down is we can change its Y position. So we can just go pull over, change Y and we can have it change Y by 30. And when we do that, let's see what happens. You can just click on this set of blocks for it to run, so we won't have to run J and the U. We'll just run the L. So just go ahead and click on it, and see how it went up 30? And now I want it to go down by 30. So you can control click on the Y and duplicate that. And I want it to go down by negative 30, which is the opposite of it. So now I click on it, it's not gonna show because um, it won't glide, it'll just change it. So we wanna throw in, go over to control, a little weight block so you could see it more clearly. So when I click on this green flag, up and then back down. And I want this to go back down again, then back up. So I'm gonna go over here again, control click, duplicate it, and I want a weight block in between these, put another weight block in in between, and I want this to go down by 30 and then back up by 30. I'll click on it again, up, down, down, up. 
I want this to happen for the whole program. So we're gonna put a forever block around it. But you see here how it goes change y by 30 and then it goes back again change y by 30. We need another weight block there to show it more clearly. So I'm gonna put another weight block underneath. So let's see what happens now. Click on this little green flag, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up. And you can change these to make them bigger numbers to have it more uh, drastic. Oh no, why? Why is my, <laughs> uh, okay. Plug back in my computer and we are, oh, yep, we're back. Okay, up, see, but it's still going on forever. Um, okay, so you can have these be bigger numbers to show it more clearly. You can make these less weights if you'd like. You can make them, you know, 0.5 or whatever number you want to make it uh, more quickly. This is really a way for you to change it to be however you like. Okay, now let's see what happens when we press the green flag for all of them. We have L moving up and down. We have U bouncing across the page. We have J spinning. Okay, let's add another sprite. Let's go over to the, choose a sprite. Let's add an I. I'm gonna add a block I, and I wanna change its color so it doesn't match the J. Go over to costumes, pick a new color. Let's go with green. Again, we're gonna click on the bucket, and we're just gonna click right in the middle. So now it's a green I. It doesn't really matter because I want this eye to be changing colors, but just to show you how to do it. Now we're gonna go explore the looks. So click on looks, and we're gonna have it change color effect by 25. So I click on it, and it'll change to different colors. And you can make this whatever number you want. Um, and I'm gonna pull out uh, when green flag is clicked, so it'll happen when the program starts. And again, we want this to happen throughout the whole program. So put a forever loop on it. And now when I click on it, It'll just change colors like that. If you want to make it a little bit slower, put a weight block in, and, you know, make it whatever number you want, maybe 0 0.2, and I'll go a little bit faster, but not too fast. Easy for I, just exploring how the change color effects work. Okay, let's add another one. So go over to choose a sprite. Let's go to letters. Let's add an E. Okay, put it right there. And put this a little closer to the L. And for E, I want him to, similar to the I, I want him to, you know, do other effects. So let's go over to looks, and then during the same block, change color. Click the little drop down, and we can have him fisheye, you can have him whirl, pixelate, and you can explore these if you'd like. Um, but I like mosaic because when you click on it, it goes to different E's. And I'm gonna make it, you know, maybe by five, just so it's a little bit slower. So drag that out, just like with the I. We're gonna put a forever block around it, put a little weight in, and I want this to happen when the green flag is clicked. So now when I show you, let's stop it, and I'm gonna click on it again. See how it's just gonna tile around. I think that's a really fun one. So you get a bunch of different E's. Okay, let's see what happens now when we click the green flag for all of them. We have E doing the mosaic, we have I changing colors, we have L going up and down and down then up, we have U bouncing across the page. We have J spinning. Okay. And, but I don't like how E and J are the same color. So I'm gonna go back over to costumes under E. I'm just gonna pick a new color, uh, maybe a blue. And we're gonna just click on that. And now he's a different color. I think that's you know more fun to have them all different colors. Okay. Now I'm gonna go back over and I'm gonna add the final letter. I'm gonna add a T and I wanna pick a different T. Let's do Let's do a glow T. Okay. Now with this T, I want him to be similar to L. I want him to get bigger, get smaller, get even smaller, then go back to the normal size. So see how in L we did big, small, small, big. We do the same thing, but with the size, with changing the size. So here we go. We go over to looks. We go over to change size by 10. And that's kind of small. So maybe I'll do change size by like by 45, so now it's really big. And then I'm gonna put a weight block in and duplicate it. Du you know, control click, duplicate it. Change size by negative 45, so it gets back to the size it was originally. So it goes big, small. And then I'm gonna have it do the same thing again, but the opposite. 
So now I'm going to go negative 45 again. So it gets really small and then gets back to the normal size. I want this to happen when it's clicked. So let's see what happens now. Big, back to normal, even smaller, bigger. And I want to set it back to the normal size again. So go over here. I want to set size back to 100. I want this to happen, uh, the whole program. So put a forever block around it. And now you see big, normal, small, normal. You can make the weight whatever you want. So now we have all of our letters set. So let's see what happens when we click the green flag for all of them. We see T getting smaller, you know. We have E tiling, excuse me. We have I changing colors, L moving up and down, U going around it to random locations, J spinning. So one thing I wanna do next, I just wanna add some music. So click on the backdrop and I'm going to add a new sound. So click on sound. I'm gonna choose a sound here and you can go to loops. You can pick whatever you want. Um, I like dance celebration. So you go back to code, go over to sound and I'm just gonna have him play dance celebrate until done. And I want this to happen when it's clicked. But the thing is here, once it's finished playing it, I want it to start again because the program could go on forever. So I want this song to repeat itself forever. So again, we're gonna pull out a forever block. Okay, so now when it clicks, the song will play. Now I wanna show you the final results. We're gonna go over here to the big screen. And here we are, in meeting Juliet. Um, we all of them are going on a perfect green flag and then stop it with the red one. Go back to the green, start it again. How we start over. I hope this was a good introduction to some cool parts, parts, cool hey. parts of Scratch. Um, if you want to stay for the next video, we're going to show you how to further animate your name and make it a little bit more detailed, hey. adding to this. Um, and the rest of the videos will include for more into Scratch programming and learning all the cool tools hey. that Scratch has to offer. Thank you for watching the video from Girls Coded Academy, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey. Hey. hey, it's Juliet from Girls Coded Academy. If you liked what you saw today, make sure you like comment and subscribe and let me know what else you'd like to see. Thanks for watching!